Could you take us back to the, the beginning? How did you discover your passion for acting and storytelling? Oh, wow. Um, well, I was, I'm not sure if you've read up about me. Um, I started acting at a very, very young age. Um, it was actually my parents. I was, I was such like an energetic, uh, you know, distracted kid that, you know, sports wasn't fulfilling, you know, that space that I needed to fulfill. Um, and acting, as soon as I, I had the chance to try it, it just grabbed onto me and I couldn't stop. When you look at your career as a whole, who or what's had the biggest influence either personally or professionally? A lot, is, a lot of it has been, you know, through personal experience. Um, I feel like acting is very therapeutic for me. I feel like I can let, let pretty much everything out on the table when I'm in front of the camera. So I think it's been a big motivator for me to continue to, you know, give myself this therapy. You've had a lot of success already uh, in your career. When you look back, is there a particular moment that stands out to you? Ooh, um, well, it would have to be my first uh, lead booking, you know, doing Make It Pop. That was a huge experience for me. Um, I spent a lot of my time, you know, watching leads, you know, thinking I, I wish I was in their shoes. And then when, I, when that opportunity came about, um, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life and of my career. <laughs> Yeah, that's a perfect segue to this next question. But, you know, you started your career working on a lot of family friendly programming like Make It Pop. What has the transition been like going from a project like that to now um, there's someone inside your house? Oh, man, I, I love it. I love it. I mean, you know, the family friendly stuff is, is nice and it's fun to do, you know, some comedy because comedy is right up my alley. I love it. Um, but getting into that nitty gritty where every actor wishes they were, you know, being able to play the dark, mysterious characters, it's always fun because it's not something that you do in your everyday life. Like, uh, you know, like there's someone inside your house playing, playing a psychopath is, is not something that you just do on an everyday basis. So to be able to, you know, put on that mask, for example, um, it's, it's really fun. Yeah, speaking of there's someone uh, inside your house, can you tell us about the film and your character? Oh, wow. Uh, there's Someone Inside Your House was, again, a dream project for me. Uh, you know, there was so much depth to a lot of what we were doing. Um, we were doing a lot of things in the field of, of slashers, you know, bringing a lot of, you know, uh, diversity into the, into a, a usually a very white-based genre you know what i mean so it was uh it was so fun to just play around zach was such a fun character because you know he was pretty similar to me in some aspects where you know he's a bit quiet you know that that weird kid a little bit um and then you know you flip on a switch and you're this psychopath and it's amazing um the whole filming progress was was fun uh the cast, all of us were best friends pretty much from the get go. And I think it really shows on camera. Um, yeah, it was just a wonderful experience. And Patrick yeah. Bryce, of course, and Henry Gayden and all of them are, are brilliant. So it was super easy to work with them. Yeah, you know, one of the central themes within the film is how we're all wearing masks. And that's especially true for Zach. And in a lot of ways, it feels like you're almost playing two characters. What was that process like developing Zach for this film? Zach definitely was a, a, a development for sure. Um, it was kind of starting with, you know, the, the basic archetype of this rich, spoiled, you know, kid who hates the world. And but adding that that kind of sense that, you know, he belongs in the friend group that he belongs in. Um, and then behind the scenes having it was hard to kind of not be in the the killer Zach mindset when we were doing our you know just everyday scenes and and you know some of the party stuff and all that stuff because for me I really wanted to you know oh wow I'm getting into the mind of a, a murderer like this is so interesting but then Henry kind of talked me down and Patrick kind of talked me down they're like we get that he is this you know behind the scenes this crazy kid but having him come across as just you know an honest character that you would suspect nothing of was was probably the biggest challenge for the character 
And the film builds to this intense uh, confrontation that involves your character. Uh, as an actor, how did you get into the mindset for a scene like that? Ooh, scary music. <laughs> I listened to some some dark, you know, some screamo, just that some of that stuff that really like invokes that kind of emotion of anger and just teen angst and hating your parents and hating where you're from. Just whatever I could bring out of myself with whatever outlets I needed, music or visuals or, you know, sitting down with Sydney was a huge thing because me and her really worked on that scene a lot together. Um, it was really whatever drove drove me to the place of like pure and utter anger. And like you're saying, there's a great chemistry that comes off the screen between you and the rest of the cast. How were you all able to build that bond? Oh, it was pretty much from day one. I think uh, we all met for the first time in Vancouver uh, during a table read where, you know, James Wan was part of that. Um, pretty much everyone who was part of the project was sitting in a room reading the script. And afterwards you're like, wow, this sounds awesome can't wait and then we ended up playing i think it was werewolf uh like a game yeah like we're a find the imposter like a tag game we were just kids for a minute um and i think that really helped us ease into somewhat it can be an awkward situation when you're meeting strangers yeah. and then told that you guys have to be best friends so i think that really kind of got the ball rolling with how our relationship growed and you know us living in the same apartment made that super easy. We were seeing each other for breakfast every morning. Uh, we went out for some drinks. It was just, it was a good time. And I feel like we all bonded very quickly. And with the film out now, is there a, a scene that you're really excited for your fans to see? I think I can speak for almost everyone. When I think the Jackson at the very beginning, our, our opening mm -hmm. kill is one of our favorites. And I think it's a fan favorite as well. Um, they did such a good job and you know it's just one of those like you can't not cringe every single time you watch that scene I don't know what it is I guess it's it's pretty effed up what happens so <laughs> that's probably one of my favorite I mean I wasn't a part of that um, so scenes that I was a part of the corn maze was just so awesome because we were working with real fire uh, we were out there and it was cold uh, Sydney was phenomenal, so she made my life super easy. It was just, that was probably, for a scene that I was a part of, that was, that was the most thrilling and the most rewarding scene. Yeah, you recently shared on social media that playing Zach forced you to explore one of the darkest places that you've ever gone to on screen. What was the biggest takeaway from this project that you'll apply to the next? Uh, that I can go there, that I have mm -hmm. the ability and, uh, you know, sometimes you end up questioning yourself. You get the, that imposter syndrome that, you know, you may or may not be able to do this. And now I know that I can get to that place. And if it's requested of me, I can, I know where to pull from and I know how to get to that level, you know? Yeah, there's so many intense moments within uh, the film. What was that process like to decompress after a day of shooting? <laughs> it's, it is hard because it's not, it's not, I'm not bullshitting when I'm, when I'm doing this, I'm really pulling yeah. real emotions. I'm really trying to get to that place, honestly, to give an honest and genuine performance so that people, you know, can feel that through the, through the lens, you know? Um, so being able to wind down is really, you know, taking the time to just shut your brain off, you know, sit at home. What most people do probably at an end of a stressful day, sit at home, you know, have a drink, watch some TV, just relax or, you know, we'd go out and sit on a couch and talk about how our day was. It was having those support groups with within our friendships helped that like so much. And we're seeing another golden age for horror to tell really cool stories. And there's so many relevant themes within this film. Was there one in particular that hit home for you? Rodrigo, his story, his, you know, his dealing with addiction and dealing with not knowing who to talk to. I think that was a big one um, because I think a lot of people are dealing with the same thing and are, you know, in hiding, <laughs> not really able to tell their story or, or find the help that they really need. So, um, you know, I think highlighting that was, was, was really awesome. Um, but I do think, you know, we hit, we hit some, some 
definitely some heartstrings with a lot of of the you know the situations that we are we dive into in the film yeah and then besides this film what's next for you Ooh, um i have a project that i'm very thrilled to be a part of i unfortunately can't talk about it right now but um keep your eyes out because that is coming um yeah i'm very excited for that uh, and then we just like to end all of our interviews with a pop culture uh, lightning round. Uh, do you have a guilty pleasure Ooh. TV show? Oh, guilty ple- pleasure TV show. Um, whew. That is, that's a hard one. Uh, Norseman was in one that I was just, just watching. It's kind of this weird, uh, you know, comedic take on the Viking era. Mm. Um, I thought that was great. Um, Seven Deadly Sins. I know it can be hit or miss on that show, but it's, I can't help but watch it. Um, yeah, there's a few out there. There's a few out there that I, you know, I sneak watch, even though they're kind of ridiculous, but I love it. Uh, what about a guilty pleasure movie? <sighs> guilty pleasure movie. Oh, gosh. Uh, Dumb and Dumber. Those, that that whole franchise yeah. it's just yeah it's one of those you can just throw on and know that Jim Carrey's gonna slay it um he was an idol of mine growing up so he's uh that's definitely one I'll watch <laughs> uh, what about a favorite book favorite book um the Mortal Instrument series was a huge mm. book of mine growing up um read that whole franchise front to back even the prequel and the the sequel franchises. Um, Hunger Games was another really good one. For some reason, it felt like every single time I read a book, they were like, I would search it up and they're like, oh, movie in progress. (laughs) They're making a movie. I was like, yes, yes. What about a favorite play or musical? Oh, um, hmm. Oh, what is, what is that? Uh, I can't, I'm so struggling trying to remember the name. New York does like an interactive, you walk through, uh, oh, everyone's no wearing masks. Sleep No More. Sleep No More, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Blew me away. That was such an experience. I actually did that with Larisa Tronco, a co-star of mine from Make Pop. Um, me and her went to go see that and we were speechless the whole time because it's such a unique way to, you know, to watch a play and, you know, be able to follow each perspective. It was just a once in a lifetime thing to see. Yeah. Uh, what about a band or artist that fans would be surprised to learn is on your playlist? Ooh, um, Paul Anka. Um, who else? Uh, who would be a weird one? Ah, it's hard, it's hard because I feel like I jump, I jump genres a lot. So I feel like the genres more than anything would, would surprise people like, uh, like some boom bap jazz from like the forties. Mm. I love that stuff. Um, but I also listen to my, you know, rap music, sometimes hardcore, sometimes, you know, jazz rap. Uh, I find myself listening to, like I said, some screamo every now and then just for, I don't know. I feel like my music taste jumps <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Very eclectic. Um, what about your dream role? Ooh, my dream role. Um, something like the Truman Show. I feel like that would be fun to explore. Something that, you know, that goes beyond the script or what you see. Something that people can, you know, study after they watch the film and really like, like p- pick apart and find, you know, cool nuances throughout the film. Um, I'd love to bring that to life. Also, period piece. I, I would love to do mm. some horse riding, bow and arrows, fighting dragon stuff. That's that's always been a dream of mine since I was a kid as well. Um, yeah, there's been, there's there's definitely a lot still to check off off my my actor's bucket list. And then final question for you: Who would play you in the story of your life? Who? Um, Wow, that's a hard one. Um, who would play me? Younger than me? Younger, older, either way. Okay, I've always, I feel like I'm two to my own horn when I say this, but people say I look like Ryan Gosling. So yeah. I feel like that would be, 
that would be the parallel there, uh, just based on what I've been told. 